Hello, hello. Welcome to the Sunday night chat. This is Sunday chat number four. I am Lee Colazzo, also known as Mrs. Reader Pants. And tonight we will be talking about, what are we talking about? We're talking about uh, taking care of you, which is so important right now with COVID. I see so many um, teachers and librarians really frustrated with what is going on, uh, particularly when it comes to hybrid learning. So we're going to talk about some tips and strategies tonight that you can try this week and um, see if they help. So come on in and um, if you're with me, say hello. Hi, Gracie Lou. Welcome. Um, let me just, I can't, it just does not want to let me type anything in. Um, so, oh well. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so I do have a question for you tonight and um, I don't know how many are watching right now, um, but if you are allowed to wear sneakers at school, can you chime in on your school's policy on sneakers? I just want to kind of get an idea about that if you are able. Let's see. Let me make sure I have all my things and I'm, hopefully you guys can hear me okay. All right, so at some point in our discussion, I would like for you to let me know what your school's policy on sneaker wearing is, because we're gonna talk about that tonight, and I'm just curious about it. Um, I'll tell you what my school policies have been. Uh, you can wear them on Fridays on jeans days. Yeah, that's that's typically what I've seen as well, um, but I'm gonna encourage you to do it more than that. We're gonna push the envelope a little bit tonight. Um, Tonight, we're going to be talking about taking care of you, and it, that is just super duper important um, that you are taking care of yourself. Nobody's going to take care of you but you, and I am actually going to encourage you to push the envelope a bit tonight. This one may be something that makes some of you uncomfortable, some of the discussion tonight, So, um, and it may be controversial, and that's okay because it's a discussion and I want you to just think about it tonight. Um, if you have a great administrator that is very, very supportive, you may find some of these tips not, um, not as helpful for you. But for some of us that have not had good administrators, this is going to be really um, big tips tonight. Um, I am live in my mom's room. Um, I'm still in Virginia tonight and um, I will be back in Playa del Carmen um, when am I coming back? Tuesday, <laughs> on Tuesday, and then I'll be back to regular schedule um, and with creating products and stuff. So, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with you, and we're gonna go ahead and get started. Let's see, what do I do? All right, I'm still getting used to StreamYard. I like it a lot better than Zoom, though, I have to say. All right, let me go to this and make it big. All right, so hopefully you are able to still hear me. If you can't hear me, please let me know. I'm going to pop on to the Facebook so I can actually see it. Okay. All right, so we are talking about taking care of you tonight. Um, we will be doing this again next Sunday at 8 p.m. because we're starting our new topic, which is going to be um, designing awesome, fun, um, digital, um, digital activities for our kids and creating them. So uh, that's something that I've done a lot of and I'm going to share what I know with you. So that will be our October challenge, which we'll talk about in just a second. This one is recommended for all school librarians and teachers. If you're a teacher, I know some of you are teachers who are thinking about library or who are currently in library school. This is going to actually help you as well, I'm hoping. Um, so just a reminder that we have our two challenges. This is the last night for our Sunday night chat for September. And we'll start our new challenge for October, which is designing fun digital activities, which is going to be really exciting. We're going to do, um, haven't quite planned this one out yet, but uh, my idea is to do two weeks on Boom Learning and two weeks on Google, creating Google activities. Um, I may even do a thing on escape rooms, but I'm still learning that myself. So I may share with, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Um, if I feel comfortable with my own knowledge, I will share that with you as well. 
So a couple of reminders about the September challenge. Um, you only have to complete four tasks on the task list, which I'll pull up in just a second. That is available in the files section of the Facebook group. Um, if you go to September challenge docs, it's a PowerPoint. And there's also, I believe, a PDF version as well. Um, and then you can download that and, um, and check off your challenges. Once you have completed four challenges, you can go into the raffle copter drawing. Sorry. You can enter the raffle copter drawing for a chance to win a $50 gift card to Teachers Pay Teachers or Amazon. It is your choice which one of those you want to do. And um, enter by 11.59 p.m. on Wednesday night, and I will do the drawing on the first and we will i will announce the winner in the october challenge kickoff which is also on the first which is thursday um don't forget to i'll talk about this again at the end uh the coupon that i have offered the last two two videos um for either a free story time for k through two or a free digital bulletin board for grade three through seven or a free digital bulletin board for grade eight through twelve you may choose any of them. I have 10 story times, 10 digital bulletin boards for three through seven, and only three for eight through 12, but more coming. Um, that's gonna expire on Wednesday at 11.59, so please make sure that you grab those while you're able. It's very easy. I'll explain them again at the end where the coupon is and show you how to do that. On Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern time, we are going to do our October challenge kickoff. So we're doing designing fun digital activities and we will have new challenge tasks. Uh, there will be a new raffle, raffle copter drawing as well, but it will still be for a $50 gift card to either Teachers Pay Teachers or Amazon. That's always gonna be the price. Okay, so here's our September challenge task list. Each different color here is a different week on the list. So the blue ones are, oh, the blue ones are week two, which was weekly theme. The green are getting, um, let's see, that was the first one. That was the three tasks for new librarians. The orangey yellow ones were last week about um, getting organized. And then the purple ones are the ones for today. All right, we're gonna get started. And I told you guys, this is going to be possibly controversial with some of you. I am very strong about, uh, I've been doing this a long time. And it really, I've dealt with, uh, I've had a lot of good principles. I've had a whole lot of mediocre principles and I've had a handful, unfortunately, of not great principles. Um, the not great principles I'm actually really thankful for because they taught me a lot about standing up for myself and standing up for others as well. Um, so I'm gonna show you this quote. This was, is from Henry, Henry David Thoreau, one of my favorite writers. And he says, I was not born to be forced. I will breathe after my own fashion. Let us see who is the strongest. And guys, my purpose tonight, and I'm speaking especially to those of you who are dealing with a situation with administration that is not as great as you would like it to be. You are strong, okay? You can do this. They cannot touch you. So you need to be able to stand up for yourself. They're not gonna fire you for wearing sneakers to school, okay? That's not the only thing we're talking about. I'm telling you, you guys have a lot more strength than you realize, especially when we band together, if you band together with your team. So um, my, my, I have three things I'm gonna tell you and I'm gonna tell you them again at the end. You have tremendous power and strength it is okay to be difficult. Being difficult means you're standing up for yourself, especially if you are in a difficult situation. And only you are gonna look after yourself. No one is gonna look after you, and nor should they. They should be looking after their own situation, okay? So don't rely on other people to do it for you. Okay, so wearing sneakers. I'm gonna just real quick, click back over to the thing and see on comments if anybody else added anything. If you are just joining us, if you are allowed to wear sneakers on Fridays or, or any time during the week, um, I see there's not that many, there's three people watching. So if you would like to chime in um, on wearing sneakers, I don't see anything. Okay. So my experience has been similar to Gracie Lou. 
Um, if you are watching this video after it's live, if you will please add that, because I'm just curious about what your school's policies are on wearing sneakers. So let me go back to my, sorry, I know you. it looks the same for you, but it doesn't look the same for me. Okay, so <clears throat> if you are not allowed to wear sneakers at school, I would like you to try it anyway. The odds are not good that they're gonna even say anything to you, they may not even notice. Um, but you need to be able to move around quickly and easily and be comfortable in your classroom. Nurses are allowed to wear sneakers. I know that. I'm staying with my mom. She's a nurse. She's, she can't believe teachers are not allowed to wear sneakers sometimes. Um, waitresses are allowed to wear sneakers in a restaurant, servers in a restaurant. I know because I worked in restaurants when I was younger. Um, there is no reason that teachers should not be able to wear sneakers to school. Your feet, you are on your feet all the time. My grandmother has a saying or had a saying. Um, she used to say that you need to have a really good bra and really good sneakers. <laughs> so I want you guys to really, you, your back's not going to hurt so much. Your feet aren't going to hurt so much. So I want you to take one day this week and try and wear sneakers all day long and see how much better you feel. The way that I started doing the sneaker thing, I didn't do it every day. A lot of days I wore cute boots. I wore Uggs. I wore whatever I wore. I wore roller skates sometimes. Um, but the way that I started wearing sneakers is I had to move furniture one day. And I had on open-toed shoes, and I didn't want to run over my toe with the shelves that are on wheels. So I just changed into my sneakers. And I accidentally I just got busy, and I left them on all day. I was kind of moving stuff all day, too. So they were on all day. I felt like a million bucks at the end of the day. I felt a lot less tired than I normally do because my feet felt great. So no one said anything to me. And I was surprised because our school's official policy was you can't wear sneakers on a Tuesday or whatever. Um, but I did. Nobody said anything. So I did it again the next day. And I even walked around out in the halls. Nobody said anything. OK, so give it a try. Even if it's against your policy, you can say you're moving furniture or whatever and don't want to run over your foot. Um, make sure your sneakers are clean. They should be in good condition. This is going to call attention to them if they're not. And you may get they may talk to you about not wearing sneakers. They need to not be too obvious. Try and wear black or white or some neutral colors. Um, if you're wearing pants with your sneakers, just put your pants down over your sneakers. You, you want them to be kind of covering your sneakers as much as you can get them to. But nothing that can create what your administration might call a distraction. Um, comfort is more important than beauty. So hot pink sneakers, as much as I love them, unless they're comfortable, I can't, I'm not wearing them to school. I'm going to wear I'm going to wear my comfortable sneakers to school. And if you have a difficult administrator, which I have had, um, you could if you if you feel really uncomfortable, you could just wear your sneakers in the classroom or library and change them before you leave. Um, if you go out to go to the restroom or have to go to the office, just put your little uncomfortable shoes back on. You can see the difference. Um, just do it anyway. If worse, they can ask you is just to change. OK, maybe they will. Maybe they won't. Um, you can call it sneaker day and do it with your team. Your team is going to have more strength than just you by yourself. So if you are on the specials rotations team where it's library and PE and music, you can do your um, sneaker day and everybody's wearing them. They're less likely to say something to you. And if all else fails, I know a teacher who wanted to wear sneakers and her she had problems with her feet and she got a doctor's note and they had to let her wear sneakers every single day. She wore sneakers. So there are ways to do it. And if especially if you have a health issue with your back um, or you're having pain, you're having foot pain, or, um, get a doctor's note. You can do it uh, and then they have to honor it. So wear those sneakers at school. I'm going to exit real quick and just make sure there's no comments. Let's see. To this okay so i have to wear sneakers yeah tile floor kills my feet they don't wig out over it thank goodness yes i think too that um if you don't call attention to it they're a lot less likely to say something to you um that's been my experience and i've worn sneakers lots and lots yeah the tile floor is horrible it's horrible and you know what to me it keeps you from falling the tile floor can get wet 
the kids come in and it's been raining outside and they have drippy raincoats or umbrellas and it gets wet and you could fall. Your sneakers are going to be a lot more likely to catch you if you slip a little bit than a little flimsy pair of ballet flats, right? So yeah, totally agree. Totally agree there. Thank you. All right. Let me go back to... Okay. So that's wearing sneakers. I'm telling you, buck the system. Buck with a B, the system. <laughs> um, you need to you need to stand up for yourself. And if wearing sneakers is something you want to do, you need to do it. Okay. Take care of you. All right. The second one is taking a walk outside. This is another one. I have never been in a school that put in the rules. You're allowed to take a walk outside during the school day. Do it anyway. Okay. You know your schedule. Just pick a time that works for you. You do not want to ever leave students unattended or unsupervised in the library. And make sure you lock the door behind you so that no one goes in and is in there by themselves and you're nowhere to be found, okay? Um, there are some things I, okay, so how this started for me is this was at my school that I had uh, struggled with the administration and there were just days that I just needed to get outside and, and be in nature. So what I did is every day, I didn't take a lunch. I was in the library, the library was open for lunch and it was busy. But after lunch, I did take my 30 minutes of lunch, which you are entitled to take, okay? You are entitled to have that duty-free lunch, even though I know a lot of us don't take it or get it. Um, make sure you get it. So I would just go uh, after lunch, since I didn't take a lunch, I would go, I'd grab a banana or an apple or whatever, take it with me if I needed a snack. And I would walk and um, just sort of enjoy nature for a little bit. So personally, I like to listen to the birds singing. But if you want to listen to music or an audio book, you could do that. I've also taken a friend with me at that time. We made arrangements. We're going to go for a walk after lunch on this day. And we did. I have met with a colleague. We had something we needed to discuss. And instead of sitting at the table talking about it, we went outside and we had a walk together and talked about whatever it was that we were meeting about. So you don't have to just sit at the table and meet. Um, you are entitled to that duty-free lunch. So if nothing else, take it then, okay? They can't take that away from you. Um, they, they can try, but you can say no. Um, there also, if you are transfer, if you are going from one school to another, you're, um, you're split at two different schools, park far away and use that time use the time to walk from um, your car to the building. Or maybe you can, um, if you have multiple school buildings, which is what we had, go figure out some kind of errand that you need to do. Make up an errand that you need to do at another building and go walk over there and take your time. Okay, you're still doing schoolwork. So, um, but take take time to go outside and have a little walk in nature. It really is rejuven rejuvenating. Okay, <laughs> now we're getting into the controversial stuff here. All right, so on your challenge task list, I have pick only one battle and give up a battle, right? I actually, when I was writing this up today, I decided that I'm, I'm gonna say maybe don't fight any battles. It's gonna be a lot easier for you, okay? Now hear me out, because I know there's a lot of battles to fight and a lot of battles that are well worth fighting. OK, and if you want to fight them, I say go for it. But if if um, there's ways to fight battles without actually fighting, OK, you can be smart about it. So I wanted to give you three examples of how I um, you could call this passive aggressive if you want to. I call it civil disobedience like Henry Thoreau. OK, so um, these are three battles that I have fought in the library. And um, these are ways that you could sort of. Uh, fight them without fighting them, okay? So the first one is Accelerated Reader. I am not a fan of Accelerated Reader. I had one school that had adopted Accelerated Reader and I went into it thinking, all right, well, I've heard a lot of not good things about this from other librarians, but let's see how it goes. Maybe it's not as bad as everybody makes it out to be, but I didn't, I decided I didn't like it. Um, it for the, a lot of the same, you can look up, there's loads of reasons why librarians don't like AR, and I agree with those reasons. So I felt like I did really fight hard on this AR battle, and um, ultimately I was never gonna win. 
this was a district decision. It wasn't something that any one librarian agreed with or disagreed with um, that we could have done anything about it. Uh, even all the librarians going to the district, I don't know if we could have done anything about it. So what is the use of me fighting so hard on AR, fighting so hard against it when it's, it's fruitless? It's not going to go anywhere. It's not going away. So if you're not going to be able to fight it, you're going to have to just do only what you have to do. Okay, maybe you have to label the books. Take your time labeling the books with AR. It takes time, right? This is a big job. So if your books haven't been labeled with AR, they need AR, just be slow about it. Okay, get to it when you get to it. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm saying get to it when you can get to it. Make it your last priority. Um, also, make sure that your administrators and your teachers know how much is spent on AR every year. It's a lot. I had no idea. You go and investigate what the, they don't put it on their website. I don't remember what it is, but it's insane. It's per student. When you have thousands and thousands of students in the district, it's ridiculous how much it is um, versus what, what students get out of it, which isn't some students benefit, but a lot of students don't. So how else could that money be used? A lot of times they have no idea how much it is. So um, make sure they do. Okay. Uh, all right, speaking of AR, by the way, the battles that I fought on AR um, were fruitless because the year after I started at that school, the district did away with AR. So it didn't matter. Uh, it had nothing to do with me. It had nothing to do with any librarian. It was a cost decision. They cut it because it was too expensive. Make sure they know how much it is. Make sure they know how much all those little prizes are and all the money you spend too on the prizes. All right, battle number two, laminating. <laughs> I hate laminating that it happens in the library. There's nothing wrong with laminating, but why is the librarian, the person with a master's degree in library science, in charge of all the laminating in the school? That makes no sense to me when anyone, I mean, literally anyone could laminate. It's easy. It's not that hard. And they say, well, the, the laminating machine gets broken if there's too many people using it. Okay, fine. Train a few people to use it and they, they can do their own laminating. Okay, um, put, put an aid on it. Put somebody, you have a copy aid, put a copy aid on. Why is the master's degree librarian wasting her time doing laminating? It's ridiculous. And yet I did it at two schools, two of my five schools. I was in charge of all the laminating in the entire building. Um, so, that's okay. Don't fight that battle. You're not going to get rid of the laminating, but be really slow. Tell your principal, your administrator, why you are a terrible fit for the laminator. I don't have time to laminate stuff. I'm going to be slow. Um, it's not going to be a priority for me, and the teachers need their laminating quicker, and you tell them all of these things, and they're probably not going to change anything. And so you say, okay, but then I want you to keep your word be slow. The laminating is not the priority. Working with students is the priority. Working with teachers is the priority. Meeting with your teachers is, is a priority. Cataloging books, priority. Laminating, not a priority. Okay, so just um, leave that to last. If the machine breaks, don't bother with it. Don't fix it for a while. Just tell people it's broken. It's broken. Let the district pay for someone to come in and fix it. You may know how to fix it, but it's going to take you a while. You don't have time for that. Let them take. Let them pay for it. That's what they they have the money for the laminating. That's their budget. Let them pay for it. The same thing with the school IDs. Um, I was in two schools where I was in charge of all of the students' IDs. I had to make them. If they lost them, they came to the library and I had to make them. I want you to think about if you lose your driver's license, what happens? You have to go, you have to go down to probably right now you have to make an appointment because of COVID. You go to the DMV or to the um, transportation, whatever the transportation, Department of Public Safety, whatever you have in your state. You have to go down there, you have to sit, you have to wait, right? You have to wait in line, then you have to pay money to get your new driver's license. And then they probably give you a temporary driver's license, a little slip of paper, and you have to wait like two weeks, three weeks before you actually get the license. It's a pain in the neck and it's inconvenient. 
So why should your students who lose their IDs get their ID lickety split? It doesn't work that way. They, if you come up with a way, they have maybe they have to come pick it up after school. They have to come get it after school. They have to do all that business. Maybe they, they need to do it on their time. Okay, your principals, they're not doing the laminating or the um, the school IDs, so they don't they don't know. And if you just say, look, I'm going to do these after school. Students have to come in and get them after school. I don't have time during the day. The machine broke at my old school, one of my schools, and it was going to cost $150 to get somebody to come out and look at it. And they didn't know what was wrong with it, so it might have cost more. They didn't have the budget to pay that person. So guess what? When the machine broke, it stayed broke. I didn't break it. It was broken, but it stayed broken the rest of my time there. So I don't know. And you say school IDs are with safety, but I, I just don't think they make your school any safer. I think if somebody wants to come into your school and do something they're not supposed to do, it's not going to matter if they have a student ID or not. Um, anyway, all right. So this is my controversial one. OK, and I know and some of you may have comments. I'll pop over in just a second. Um, I don't want you to stay whatever the task is that you're going to pick and not fight it anymore. I want you to not stay after school to do that if you any any longer than you have to. Right. I don't want you going in on weekends to laminate stuff, which I have done. OK, I did that with my little baby in my arms. I was up there laminating on a Saturday. I mean, it's ridiculous. That's just not a, it's not OK. Somebody needs to say no. If you are really, really good at this task, and you say, no, you can't do it, but then you do it and you rock it out. You're never going to get rid of it. You have to be slow. They have to feel some pain that you're not going to get it done right away. Don't make yourself feel all the pain. Um, be excellent at being a librarian, but this particular task, whatever it is that you choose, I want you to be really terrible at it. Like have fun being terrible at it. Be as incompetent as you possibly can. That's my advice for you. So. You can on your challenge, you can pick a battle to give up and a battle to fight if you want to. But I think also picking no battle, don't fighting any, don't fight anything is also a good plan. Let me pop over, see if there's any comments. <laughs> this was the one I was like, I don't know, people are really going to disagree. All right. Yeah. Laminating winds up in the landfill forever. Oh, it's so true. It's so true. Uh, the joke at my school was that. Uh, well, this was one of the laminating texts that told me this, and I, it stuck with me ever since. I thought it was hilarious. And he said, um, teachers, yeah, Gracie Lee, you've probably heard me say this one before. Teachers find paper in the parking lot and bring it in to laminate it. Like they want to laminate every single thing. Another thing you can do with the laminator, and this was something that thankfully my principal at my school was sympathetic about the laminator, and she knew how much um, difficulty it was. Some things that I did at that school um, I trained if teachers had like if they came in and they were frustrated because the laminating was taking so long, which it did. I have I'm busy. I don't have time for that. Even with my roller skates on, I didn't have time to fool with the laminator, especially when it broke or needed a film change or whatever. So it might be slow. So um, if I had teachers who came in and who were frustrated with it, I would say, look, how about if I just teach you how to do it? Did I ask my principal for permission? No, I did not because she's got other things to do and I'm not going to bother her with that. Right. This is my decision. You made me in charge of the laminating. I'm in charge. She's getting trained. If she wants to be trained to run it, I'll show her how to run it. I'll show her how to change the film and then she can come run her own. OK, do that with a few teachers. They'll be able to they'll be happy because they really want to run it themselves. They want it as fast as they can get it. If they can just come in and do it, it's a lot easier. They're not stupid. They, uh, the school acts like they're going to break the laminator every time. And maybe, yeah, they might break it. But that's anything that they anything that any person is touching. The copier. How many times a day does that break? We had a copier that broke. Gosh, it's always broken. So um, you can train your teachers to do that. And just don't ask permission. It's easier to ask for forgiveness later. Well, I was busy and the laminator is just not my priority. Then go to graduate school to laminate. I didn't do that. Uh, you can also um, make it so that you have a certain day of the week that you laminate. And maybe that's a day that's lighter on the class schedule for you, um, that you only laminate that day. And if it's turned in by that day, then it gets laminated. And if not, it goes into next week's bin for laminating. I also, my principal at that particular school was very um, 
uh, helpful because she said that uh, any laminating job that was a large laminating job had to be approved by her. This was something that we came up with together. It's not that she didn't trust me. It's that she trusted me. I got to decide what was a large laminating job. So basically, if a teacher brought me a big laminating job that I felt like this is this is ridiculous. This stuff is going to get thrown away quickly. Um, I would just tell them that they had to go to the principal and get approval. And she told me if they if you send them to me and for approval, the likelihood of me approving it is very slim. And if I do, I'll call you and just discuss it with you. She trusted me. That's why she said she had to approve it. It was brilliant. So your principal can take that off for you. OK. Oh, my gosh. I'm not seeing all kinds of awfulness. I thought this might be a really controversial one. And if you are watching this later on uh, and you have things to say about it, it's OK. I figured that this one would be one that people might get upset about because I'm telling you, I think it's important that you you stand up for yourself and that if the system isn't working for you, you make it work. You make it work anyway. OK, take care of you. All right. So don't fight them battles. Stop it. Stop fighting them. All right. And. The last one, this kind of goes with the fighting battles. I want you to think about giving something up. Um, if, if the activity, if the thing is, um, I don't know, it, let's use laminating as an example. That's a non-library activity. You could not do library laminating ever and your library could still be amazing. It doesn't affect your library at all, laminating. So think about who else could do that task. Laminating, you could certainly have parent volunteers do it. Probably because of OSHA, you can't have students laminate, but you can have parent volunteers and you can teach your teachers who uh, maybe have more laminating than other teachers um, or uh, who just who just want to be able to do it themselves and be done. Um, those there's going to be a lot of those teachers. They'd rather do that. So just teach them how to do it. And, you know, if it breaks, you're there to deal with it. But um, it's. I'm really I, I just think teachers are really smart and this not trusting of teachers with the laminators is just ridiculous. It's ridiculous. These people are trusted with children every single day, a room full of 30 of them. They can't be trusted to laminate a little piece of paper. Ridiculous. So I know just don't agree with that. Um, think about how you can minimize the task. That would be things like um, making uh, so that you have one day a week that you laminate or um, doing something like what I the little pact I made with my principal where I send the send her the big jobs <laughs> that may or may not be huge jobs. I didn't have a certain definition of it, but if I sent them to her, she usually would decline it. Um, I want you to complain one time, let them know why you are a terrible pick for this particular job. And then after that, I want you to keep your word and be a terrible pick for that job. If you do a bad job with it, maybe they'll find somebody else to do it or at least somebody to help you with it. Make it your very last priority. Laminating is not your priority. It just isn't. It, you could go the whole rest of your life as a teacher and not laminate something, and it's still not going to make you a greater teacher or a worse teacher. It's just lamination. It's not the end of the world. Um, do not ever stay after hours for whatever the task is. Don't go on weekends. Don't bring your little baby up there and do it on the weekends like I did. Don't be me. Um, if teachers complain that you're too slow, tell them, great. Tell admin how slow I am. Maybe they'll get somebody up here to help me. Please encourage them to complain. That's fine. That's what they get paid the big bucks for. Let them figure it out. And um, if you need to make it, try and make a case for it, I have found personally that if I'm trying to make a case for something with an, an administrator, see if you can tie it to safety concerns and or cost. So like the AR, the accelerated reader, I was never getting rid of that on my own and I knew it as much as I fought it and as much as I hated it. I was never going to get rid of it. They ended up cutting it because it's too expensive. So make sure that people know how much things cost. And um, if there's a safety concern um, with, um, I don't know, say they want to take you for lunch duty and the library is really crowded at lunch, the safety concern could be who's going to be in there with those library kids. They can't be in there alone. So um, just try and make things safety or cost concerns if you can. That seems to be what um, works the best. Going in and saying this is too hard for me doesn't usually work, unfortunately. OK, reminder, you guys have tremendous power. You have strength and you can do this. I have never heard of a teacher being fired because they didn't want to laminate or because they wore sneakers to school. 
or because they took a walk during their 30 minute duty free lunch. Okay, you have power, you have strength, you can do it. Stand up for yourself. It is okay to be difficult. Do you think Ruth Bader Ginsburg was worried about being difficult? She wasn't. Oprah Winfrey, not worried about being difficult. Okay, Maya Angelou, not worried about being difficult. Great people are difficult. People who are remembered for making change in the world are difficult. So be that. You don't have to fight. Just don't do it. Okay, be difficult. I love telling you to be difficult. <laughs> and uh, only you can look after you. So nobody else is going to look after you, nor should they. So please, please make sure you take care of yourself. If you are not in a good place, you are not there for your kids. You are not there for your family and your personal kids. You need to be in a good place. So I hope I'm speaking to some of you right now because I see so, so many uh librarians and teachers with so much frustration right now with um, hybrid learning and it's totally you're totally right it's horrible what is going on but um you gotta stand up for yourself you can do it all right um just a couple of quick reminders before i pop back over to comments you can tell i get very passionate about this i feel like i'm like wiping tears i'm so just like i i want you to stand up for yourselves you can do this um, the air table uh, that I mentioned in, I think, chat number two, if you click on here, you will see the weekly themes. I have no idea if anybody's added to this uh, since I put it. This is the same screenshot that I've used. But if you click on it, it'll take you to that. You can download it and have your own version and add your own weekly theme ideas. Or you can add to the one that's on there. You all have editing access, so you can add to it if you want to. I have no idea what's on there right now. I need to go look. Reminder about the coupon. You have until Wednesday night at 11.59 p.m. It will automatically turn off, so make sure you use it. It's great. If you are K through two, the story times, you have 10 to choose from. All you have to do is click on this link right here. This PowerPoint will be posted after the um, after this Facebook video is over, and you can go and click here for the K through two. If you'd rather have the three through seven, you can click here. And you can click on these and look at them and then come back. If you start looking at the K through two, but decide to do three through seven, you can change your mind after before you've downloaded it. <laughs> and then uh, or you can do an eight through 12. Unfortunately, the eight through 12s, I only have three. So um, I will be adding more, but it won't be before um, before the coupon expires. So you just have the three to choose from. I am still traveling and visiting family. So I haven't added anything new since I've been here. And I don't know what I'll get to this week. I get back to Playa del Carmen Tuesday evening. My new products always come out on Thursdays. So we'll see if I can pull one out this week, but I, I don't know. Um, use that coupon code Sunday chat um, to get the freebie and you just add it to your cart. And then Sunday chat, you'll do the coupon code down on the lower left and it will take off the whatever the amount is. Um, a few quick tips that I always have at the end of my videos, but my favorite one is find that teacher and library and bestie in your school. Find someone that you can go out for coffee or whatever beverage you love and commiserate about wearing sneakers at school. <laughs> now you got in trouble or whatever. Um, these, these people are gonna be lifesavers um, when you are really struggling. Um, they have been for me as well. So I'm going to escape and go back to the comments. Okay, let's see. All right. Um, <laughs> yeah, I love these affirmations. Um, this is why I chose to do the Sunday chats on Sunday night, because it's so important, guys, that that um, I just want you to have some some something to focus on during the week. And I think this week uh, I just have seen so much sadness in librarians and and teachers. And it's so understandable. You guys are not alone. I am no longer in the library and I'm just in awe of some of the creativity that I've seen. And um, yes, there is a lot of people really, really struggling. I've also seen some people very positive and really trying to stay positive. Um, but really, you are not alone. There are so many. I just want to try and make it easier for you. Anything that I can do um, to make it easier for you. 
So, all right. So that is our Sunday night chat for, I know I did definitely did not stick to 15 minutes today, but this one was so important um, to go over and talk about with you. If you are watching this as uh, in a later on time, um, if you're watching the replay, please post your comments either in a new thread or you can post them in this thread. Um, I do check those and will respond. So if you, if you disagree with me, if you think I'm too combative or too passive aggressive or whatever, that's okay. I know, I know that, that this may, this doesn't work for everyone. It's just, I just really think you guys need to, we have a lot of power. We do. They're not going to do anything. I promise. So, um, it, especially now they really can't. So, uh, take, take the reins and take care of yourselves. Okay. All right. So that's it. Um, I will see you again on this Thursday, actually, for the October challenge kickoff. We're going to be doing designing digital good stuff um, for Google Classroom and Boom for sure. And I don't know what else I'm going to add in. Those are the two I know the best. So we'll kick that off on Thursday and then I'll see you next Sunday night for a chat number five. I will talk to you guys later. Have a great week.